Hey guys, this is Maui Snake here with another pro player analysis video, and today I'm going to be doing Sergey, the up and coming Finnish star for Ents Esports. Sergey is 16 years old, but in the past 10 months he had the best rating for his team, with Alu just right behind him at 1.17, Sergey on top with a 1.18 rating. Really impressive stuff. 1.20 kill death ratio. This guy's a monster. Hopefully, you guys enjoy and learn something here. This is going to be a long form pro player analysis video. Haven't done one of these for a while. Just getting back into the flow of things. And I'm going to be covering a few players before the upcoming major. Just players that I find interesting. And Sergey definitely was one of them. Uh, so we can see that on the pistol round here, Ents go for a two-man B setup at a three-man A play, where two players push apartments rather quickly. Alu jumped across mid to get some information. Now Sergey is going to try to help out Alu. Just gets one shot, doesn't overcommit. Now he can play back, play with his team. It's a 4v2 advantage. He doesn't need to give up any 1v1s, doesn't need to go for any risky peaks, and now he's just going to play with his team here. North are in a pretty bad situation right now. Kirby is in pit with the bomb right now. AZ is on the site. And Ents, they know they can just hold together here, and if North make a wrong step, they will likely be able to find the kill here. Sergey is just playing along with his teammate next to him. He's next to Ariel. Alexi. Around Moto. Sergey and the rest of the Ents guys, they just decide to push Kirby at the end there. They know that they can just overwhelm him. And they do just that. Sergey does die along the way, but he is able to manage to help secure the round with his team. And uh, if you guys are going to see here sergey pretty good at finding headshots he has a I think, I think a 57 percent headshot percentage according to hltv he's got really crisp aim uh you'll see it in the second half as well highlighted um, but something interesting about how he plays this anti-eco round is that he is one of the only players i see by the mp5 in the pro level scene i went through the all the miners and i looked at the hltv top weapons used and the mp5 was barely used at really any of those. In fact, it didn't even make the top 10 weapons for any of the tournament, any of the EU, NA, CIS, Asia Minor. None of the MP5 was beat out by the UMP, it was beat out by the MP9 and MAC-10 in all those tournaments. It's not really a popular gun, but Sergey decides to use it. So he decides to play port side, he uses his utility pretty early, throws a nade for his teammate Ariel, and because they don't really have too much more utility to go around at mid, they decide to fall off. Alu is still kind of sticking around here, just holding the smoke, as we can see, but Sergey is already making a little bit of a crossfire setup between him and Ariel. Uh, the decision to crouch here is a little interesting, given that he can't fall off the angle very uh, quickly if someone's to peek him. Usually from this kind of angle, you're trying to look for one kill really quickly, but I guess he likes the little angle here with the boxes on the A site. We can see that earlier also Ents got banana control, so they are going to be comfortable just letting Alexi just take that by himself, and Sergey's just going to be playing behind default. It's a really good position. Usually you can actually set up nice multi-frag round here, but because it goes silent after North throws their nades, Ents realizes that it is time, in fact, to rotate. And so Sergey's just going to be on the rotation here. Pretty good fake, actually, that worked out. And uh, good damage from Sergey there. Onto that opponent. Finds the instant headshot onto Valde, and then he switches out for the ump. And he's able to get the bomb defuse. So, pretty clean stuff from Sergey that round. Nothing too special. Just kind of goes for a standard rotation. Uh, you can see his utility set in the beginning on the anti-eco there. North actually decided to force up, though. So, um... It wasn't the cleanest of anti-ecos, but it does uh, hurt North's economy to do that. But they decide to force again, or Valde does decide to buy, which is interesting. As ends usually would be gifted this round against a lot of teams, as they usually decide to cut their losses, don't keep forcing into it, and uh, simply just go for the full eco. But North and Cadian, it looks like they want uh, to keep fighting into this one. They know they can break the Ents' economy pretty well if they do win this one, because Ents only had, I think, three alive in the previous round. So, early smoke towards mid, 
Ents, they probably expect an eco here, but after they hear the Galil, they should know that it is in fact a gun round, or a force buy at that. And I feel like that's a mistake from North to throw that decoy from Gade. Um, maybe he's trying to fake that they have more rifles than they do. Um, but probably just kind of bought it and decided to throw it away. Um, but it does give Ents a bit of information as to know that this is in fact a force buy and not just another uh, full save. So we can see that Sergey, he likes to just fall off after about 40 seconds at mid. Um, he uses his smoke along with Alu. They neither of them have it anymore. And when they run out of smokes at mid, they decide to just give up bracket. They don't continue to fight it. They don't try to make any kind of crazy setup or push or anything. They don't have a lot of information right now. They know that North have apartments control. And when the opposing team has apartments control and you don't have any more smokes for mid, it's really hard to just hold that position. Usually it just takes a single smoke from the terrorists to stop. Uh, any kind of uh, bracket control from the CTs. Now Sergey with his counter utility is going to just play the fifth position. It's a pretty smart spot for an MP5 to play. North running the same smoke strat that they had in the previous round, but Sergey is able to lock it down almost entirely at that position. And he's able to work with his team, and they clean it up. Uh, pretty interesting setup, though. Uh, to be noted from the Ents guys, they play one on balcony and one in the mini pit. Uh, it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a tough situation actually for the balcony guy. He's kind of on his own a little bit. But if they swing from porch side, it usually means that the guy in pit can help him out and they can have kind of a double peak lineup on top of each other in that situation and be able to just mow those kind of guys down. Um, but it does kind of live leave the balcony guy to fight the apartment section by himself. So Sergey waits a little bit longer this round for his smoke, but really it was pretty similar. He decides to finally throw it uh, as a counter smoke as North we as North through this arch smoke. Um, that's usually kind of a standard way you see a lot of professionals use their counter utility. Is as soon as they see a smoke towards bracket, they decide to throw their smoke. Uh, usually it's more common to see it being held if they have a good weaponry, but because Sergey's on a rifle, it could be a little answer. But now the rotation comes out. Goes for the spray. It's quite a bit of damage in. And doesn't go for the reload. Notice that. After he sprays, instantly uh, switches to the USP. Knows that North are trying to make a play, probably. He doesn't even see the player from North jumping through that smoke. He just instantly sw switches to that uh, that pistol, and that does save his life, in fact. If he hadn't, uh, possible that the player that jumped through could have killed him. Now you're going to see Sergey's aim at work. Just a clean retake from him and his team. They send two through CT and one through construction there. You can't draw on the map anymore, although it was my reaction to pull it up and try to draw on it. Please, Valve. It would be really nice to be able to do that. But finally, North went on a pretty much full eco there. They just bought a couple of deagles and um, maybe just a couple nades. No armor, though. And finally, they're going to be up against a gun round. So, Ents, up against their first gun round, decide to go for a banana control play. You can see that Sergey comes here immediately to throw a smoke grenade and a Molotov to help his team out. And he's going to stay here for a while until uh, Ents, I don't think they really want to go for this at this point. Um, because that smoke is right there at the half wall, uh, you can't really take banana control all too easily. So, Sergey's just going to rotate off. Uh, Ents... We're actually foiled in their plans, North giving Ents a run for their money in terms of the utility, counter utility department. Smoking just kind of halfway up banana doesn't allow the CTs to easily get banana control. It's a really nice play. Uh, a lot of pro professional teams do like to do that, kind of smoke the half wall, more or less. Um, some of them have different ideas with it. I think North were maybe trying to throw a half wall smoke, but it got put out by a molly. Now we can see that Sergey and the rest of his team, they're so comfortable that even though they don't really have full banana control, we can see that X7 is playing all the way back at CT right now. They are still comfortable having this 4A setup. They flash aerial forward. And now that they get that information in the mid round, uh, go for, going for that aggressive utility peak, they decide to fall off with their players. And North, they were really slow to get bracket this round, and it's actually going to uh, help North out in a way. And because Ents just look bracket with that flash peak, they don't think that anything is going to happen towards A. So Sergey and Ariel just left alone on an island here, the two of them. But we're going to see their nice double peak setup here is good enough to lock it down. They get quite a few kills and they're able to still secure the round 
pretty easily. So Sergey and his teammate just lock it down there. It was a really good late round setup from them. If North actually sent anyone towards Arch, that might not have worked out as easily as it did. But uh, because they didn't, North just completely came out of apartments and port side, really, and didn't have the hardest of times just holding that one. So Sergey kind of feeling himself goes for that slight peek towards mid there, but it does throw his smoke out. You can see that he uses his smoke pretty much within the first 20 seconds of every round towards mid. That's really important to just slow down any kind of bracket control. Uh, really, if you give the T's bracket control too early, there's too many options for them. And just throwing that early smoke just pushes their timer down to about a minute, because if Alu layers it with his own smoke, although since he has an op, he might not decide to do that, uh, it really gives... The CT is just a lot of information in the round. So he does decide to use it now. Alu, that is. And this will allow Ents to have bracket control pretty much till the 50 second mark. And usually around this point, uh, North and a lot of T teams will decide to make their play at this point. Um, but they are, in fact, kind of moving towards B. Sergey just going to stay in this two man setup with Alu. And finally, Ents. It just really mow him down. Uh, Sergey didn't really have to do all too much there. But just trying to explain to you guys how the bracket control works for them as. They don't actually just layer the smokes outright. Like, it's not as simple as just, you smoke, oh my god, the smoke smoke's gone, Alu, throw your smoke right away. It's kind of like, keep hold of bracket till a certain timing. Um, especially because Alu has an op. If Alu didn't have an op, it's possible that Ents would have just cycled through their smokes a little bit faster. But because he does have that, he can more confidently hold the bracket position. It's um, much more comfortable if you're one of your bracket players is op -ing. So, Sergey pressuring mid a little bit with that Molotov. Um, conditioned teams like this uh, with a Molotov also can delay their timing. You can see that all day in Gade. Because of that Molotov, usually what that results in is a player kind of moving down mid, peeking into alt mid. It's a very It's been a play for a while now. Kenny S um, was enabled to make that play a lot on, uh, I think, various versions of Inferno. I think he did that on the last version of Inferno 2. They would just throw a Molly down, and then you peek into the alt mid, or you peek into the window sometimes too. And really, the T's had no idea what the offensive opera would make a play doing. But Ents, they just throw that to keep North just on their toes. And they're just going to run the same setup again. They know that North didn't see this come out last time. And uh, the Molotov makes Sergey a little bit more confident that he can hold the smoke a little longer. Also, the fact that Alu is holding it uh, with his op and through his smoke earlier as well means that Sergey is going to be the second guy to throw a smoke. Not really much of a big difference, but it is, in fact... Um, just a different, just kind of timing for them. So they're still just going to hold bracket control. And uh, North, though, they're going for kind of a boiler pop here, and along with an apps pop. Sergey's in a great position, though, to get a multi frag. Peeks out late, gets AZ and KD in. They just think it's Alu on the arch side, and that's the power of that position there. Really quite strong. A little hasty there from Sergey. Uh, I think he heard the bomb plant, thought he could swing and try to get the kill. Maybe a teammate told him that, but he in fact swings out, and North, they're able to take him out. And Alexi does die, so finally Ents lose their first round. I'd say that's probably one of the first misplays from Sergey in this game. Um, he either needed to peek out much earlier, or just wait for his teammate. And that's why I'm trying to do the long-form demo reviews. I know a couple of you guys have said you like seeing them all the way through. Uh, you get to see the mistakes of the pros as well. Um, the short form ones, I just kind of show highlights. Um, Ella Putty does a great job at that already. Just kind of shows like their setups, their highlights, and things like that. What they're, what, how they use utility and how they have, play certain setups. But it's nice to see the pros' mistakes too. You can learn from those just as well as you can learn from uh, some of their uh, uh, nice plays too. So they're gonna run a double pit setup here. Sergey has been playing the arch side lately but they're going to change it up. Uh, pretty much as soon as Ents realizes that the opponent has seen a specific play come out from them, they decide to uh, not run that same play again. So Sergey still in the pit position here, and uh, North do know that this is a possibility. They know that pit is not completely clear, but they're still just going to use their utility to try to isolate anyone that could be in pit, or Graveyard Gate is going to 
still be on the bomb site, but he's going to swing out completely aware that this is a possibility, and Sergei just doesn't expect that peek. That's pretty nice from Gade, in fact, to recognize that was a possibility. However, Ents is still able to clean it up. Um, because Sergei stayed in pit and alive so long, he didn't fight sight. And even though he died here without getting a kill, he gave his team all the information they needed. Ents were already in great position there. They had a player Moto, they had a player at Arch side. They pretty much knew that the hit from North was going to go towards A. And because of that, they were able to reset North's economy and be up 7-1 to one here. Now North just on Deagles, a couple pistols, a flashbang, and the odd decoy from Kadian. Knowing that they're completely reset, it's in Ents' best interest to just use their utility early, stop any kind of rush, slow North down, and help Ents just get a little bit more information. Uh, they know that North were already shooting out the window at alt mid, they were getting into apartments, so now they're playing this double apartment setup. This is a little bit uh, scary if you get double peeked from pistols, especially deagles. Uh, if one of your players falls, the guy's just going to be by himself here, but we can see that Ents are still confident in this. And it is going to catch T's off by surprise. If, if the T's would have double peeked there, it would have been difficult. But uh, Kirby actually with a nice shot on a Sergei there as he tries to get aggressive. That might have been a little bit hungry from Sergei to try to look for more Ecos. Although, Kirby did admittedly just go through a smoke and uh, had a really nice peek onto Sergei there. So, I'd give credit to Kirby there more than Sergei making a mistake in that situation. I mean, if he instantly... If anyone instantly headshots you with a deagle, it's going to be... Credit to them a little bit. Uh, Sergey, though, starting this round, they were trying to make that same B play again, but he falls due to a uh, triple nade stack. Pretty good stuff from North. So North are able to pick up the win round win off of that, but they only kept a single player alive. Kirby stays alive, um, but Enz's economy is surprisingly not as healthy as you may have thought, despite them winning quite a few rounds in a row. So Sergey with the 5-7, going for a new play here with Ariel. They are going to be going for an aggressive apps play. Uh, this is Great way to use uh, lower econ, just taking the fight right to the opponents, using your close range <clears throat> range weaponry, such as a 5-7 and an ump, just by playing right in apartments. 5-7 from this distance, instant headshot, instant kill. It's pretty much, it's almost the perfect gun for CT side that you'd want here. Maybe the AUG would be a little better, but dancing around in apartments with a 5-7 is actually sometimes even better than having an AUG that can similarly one-shot headshot from about this range. So we're going to see North does, in fact, go for a B play. Sergey still holds apartment and is able to get a pretty quick rotate in here. And because Alu's already running onto the bomb site, Sergey's just going to run through every smoke looking for a gun here. And even though, well, Ents got that apartment control early, it allowed Alu to rotate to B a little bit earlier in the round, so that helped out a lot. So Ents... The play from Sergey and Ariel did enable the B-hole to be a little bit stronger. Something to keep in mind, the push and pull of, of professional teams like Ents, in that they get a control in one area, then they can pull off another area and kind of stack that other section of the map. Something I can notice about Ents is that they are really good uh, positionally. That's something I noted about Alu when I did my pro player analysis for him like two years ago or something, is that Alu is probably one of the best positional oppers in the game still. He doesn't always have the craziest highlight shots or anything like that, but he's really good at being at the right spot at the right time, and I think he carries that over to help out Ents uh, work just really strongly in uh, making sure that they always have uh, the right people in the right places, and rarely are they caught off guard with uh, just players just kind of like not stacked in the right position. Uh, we can see that so far one round this entire half that happened where I think it was Sergey and Ariel were on the D-bomb side together in that double stack uh, position. But other than that, they've really had the players in the right spots nearly every time. So Sergey trying to get in on the action. Does throw a nice support flash, although it doesn't seem to matter. As Kirby was likely able to dodge it. And uh, Ents pretty much just cleaning up right there. Not too much from the way of Sergey, He does mess up that smoke grenade earlier in the round, but that's not really all too important. So this is looking like a quick play from North. They have a single flashbang. They're gonna get this positioning towards apartments. Sergey here playing anti-flash. Knows that he is, in fact, against North here. Don't have much utility, are on an eco. So, plays anti-flash, and just mows them all down. 3k, pretty much, probably 300 damage right there. I'm just racking up the eco frags. 
That was kind of an interesting read from Kadian. He did know that Ents like to smoke mid early. That that flash mid play probably actually doesn't even uh, it didn't work, but it wouldn't even it wouldn't work even more if he if like Ents didn't condition him to know that they're gonna smoke it all the time. The whole point of that is to basically do a fanatic pop uh, on the old version of Inferno. Fanatic used to throw that top mid smoke a lot of the time, flash through it. You don't know what side they're coming at you from. You don't know if you should have two players arch, two players porch, and uh, the old Inferno made that work a little easier. Now I think the angles are a little cleaner. And uh, you can play Anti-Flash just a little easier. So it's not as effective. But that's kind of, I think, the idea behind Kadian's uh, play there. Sergei, though, reaps the benefits of the new map just being a little bit uh, more flush in a lot of the angles and being able to play Anti-Flash pretty easily there. So this is a different play from Ents. They have a huge lead now, and uh, they can start getting a little tricky with their positioning and plays. They decide to make a double boiler push. This is not something that they've done before. Sergei right behind Ariel. Ariel gets the 2k, so Sergei doesn't really have to do all too much. He does get a kill, though. Um, but... Just... Now, because of Ents' lead, they can really just start going off here. They uh, know that they're very confident in a lot of their positions. Sergei just playing around mid with Alu still. They can hold this bracket position. And uh, because they have this smoke, it does enable them to play this comfortably. Also with Alu's op, they know that they can still hold this. Kadian makes a footstep. Sergei dodges the flash. And uh, Sergei a little slow to react there. I think he saw the gun of Kadian, but he didn't want to peek out uh, right away. But he plays off his teammate well. Ariel does pay the price for it. But now it's just down to a uh, 1v4. And uh, the rest of Vance is able to clean this one up. So Sergey throwing a little bit of a utility set towards mid. You can see that he bought dualies, as did the rest of Vance. It seems like they all like having three guns instead of just two, other than Alu, who does decide to buy the 5-7. Sergei, though, plays Graveyard this time. This is the first time you've seen him here in this game. He's able to get a single kill, and uh, really just ends throwing out another setup against North there. Uh, CT side for Sergei, little summary from him. Um, just good p positional plays from Entz. Uh, him and Ariel work really well off of each other at that A bomb site. Uh, you see that Sergey though is the one rotator for when they go for a three-man B play um, and try to take banana control. But because North was using such good counter utility, they decided to not continue with that play as much as they could have. And because their holds against North were so good and North wasn't having any success getting into that B bomb site anyways, uh, they didn't really need to keep pressing that issue. Might see in another game that they would go for banana control a little bit more, try to set up an op towards that position, but um, really, they just stuck it to North rather well. North couldn't get any of their executes off and working. It seemed like Entz was pretty aware of what those were and how to play off of them better. So Sergey talking about headshot percentage here, we're going to see him have a pretty good round. Uh, this is probably one of the big best highlights from the EU Miner, and uh, I'll try to explain how it all broke down. So Ents kind of going for a weird default play to start. Um, they sent three towards kind of alt mid, mid side, and Sergey and Alu just decided to run up towards B and just take the fight, as they knew that a few of the North players were towards A at the moment. And because of that, they are in fact able to get construction control. This is a really good spot to be in if you are Ents, of course. Uh, it's going to be hard to get the bomb across, but a little bit of a run boost for X7 helps him get across. The bomb doesn't actually get planted, so Sergei he finds another headshot, but now he's in a 1v3. And notice how he isolates all the angles here. He plays very patiently and hopes that North don't play off first contact properly. And he knows how to react perfectly from that. The kill on Kirby is going to make Kadian peek out, but Sergei holds the perfect headshot lane angle. And I'm pretty sure that was a five headshot round there. So, uh... Yeah, Sergei's pretty nuts at getting headshots. Um, to try to break that down a little bit more, though, um, Sergei was able to read the first contact crossfire between Kirby and Kadian really well. 
He knew that Kirby was able to sneak into the water position and that Kadian would likely be playing off of Kirby's first co contact there. Kirby gets an immediately annihilated because Sergei just hits the shot, and sometimes that just happens. And then he just flicks his crosshair right to where Kadian is going to be peeking from, and he's able to capitalize off of that. So early utility towards B gets Kadian out of position. He runs forward, and Sergei takes him out without taking a single point of damage. Spoke a little too soon, though, as finally a nade takes him down to 99 HP. So Ents just going to take their time with this one. They've got an opening pick in the round. Usually professional teams, such as North, will get a little bit desperate in situations like this um, and go for a push. But instead of going for a push, North are actually going for a stack. So they hold two of their players in apartments still. And usually with that kind of information, a lot of IGLs would read the situation and just say, okay, we have apartment control still. You guys should just go B together. But in fact, North just go for the uh, four-man A stack. Finally, AZ decides to fall off of the stack and make his way towards B. X7 finds out that they do in fact have apartment control. So this is going to be sounding the alarm for Ents that they really are going to have a hard time getting back to A and uh, usually should go B in this situation. But we're actually going to see a fake come out from Ents. They're not going to send all four of their players towards B together. They're kind of doing a 2-2 fake. And uh, after a little bit of utility, Ariel and Sergei go through the smoke mid. A really risky play, but it pays off for them as they are now able to take control of the bomb site. And not everything is clear, though. So Sergei is just going to be planting in a pretty safe position here. And he throws a pretty botched... Um, Moto Smoke. I thought from the way he lined that up so confidently that that actually would have been flush, but it is not actually a good... It was actually not a good smoke grenade. So, um, gets to a pretty solid post-plant position into Graveyard. Notice that he gets off the bomb site though. Ariel stays on it. Sergei immediately gets off. And this is going to help Ents go up to 15-2. Really good round for them. Oddly also, I uh, just noticed this. I watched, I watched this before. And I uh, forgot to mention it this time, but Sergei doesn't buy head armor here, which I think is a pretty big mistake given that he had more than enough money to buy that. Uh oh. I think he had $1,100 at the end of his purchasing period. So now he has to buy armor uh, kind of twice, and he could have avoided uh, spending that extra $1,000, or I think it's actually an extra 1650 or it depends how you look at it, actually, from the previous round. But now Ents are going to run into a little bit of trouble here. So we're going to start seeing some of the mistakes that they make as they try to close this game out. So kind of a weak utility set towards Banana. You can see that Ents aren't really going for too much control here. They think that North are going to be making a, kind of a misplay here, and they're going to just let Sergei fight up Banana, as opposed to working with the nades from earlier. And so he's kind of just moving up by himself. Kadian and Kirby here are going for a little bit of a play. The late Molly take comes out, and now Ents have no control towards Banana whatsoever. Had they used their utility earlier, they might have uh, been able to get a couple players out, but uh, reading the utility at B. They know at most there's three at A, and they kind of just run into this pretty haphazardly. Sergei is able to get the kill on the Gade, but that one more player in pit, Balde, makes a great play, just kind of waits it out, and he's able to get a double kill there, and that enables the rest of North to clean this one up. Kind of a weird, just like a weird default there from Ents. They played it a little too passively, I'd say. Uh, and uh, because they didn't get banana control, they really didn't have a lot of information. And they just kind of hightailed it towards A. They knew that there were only two players towards banana, I think at most. And so they commit their entire team to just running a porch. And uh, it almost worked, but Valde just made a great play there. If Valde were taken out just a kill earlier, might have gone the way of Ents, and Sergei tries to isolate the duels, but without any body armor, he uh, he really just doesn't find the headshot on Devalde, I'd say. That wasn't really the hardest shot. Sergei actually hits those quite a bit. In fact, his headshot percentage is really good this game. He has actually a 68% headshot percentage on his kills right now. And uh, 
But we can see his idea there. He tried isolating the 1v1s by taking out any one towards banana and then he to play the bomb. And they go for another fat banana rush again. Kind of meant to say fast there, but uh, fat works, I guess, too. Um, so, uh, north, though, they go for a fast retake, or at least they pressure like they are going to. They throw a lurk smoke here, and they throw a little bit of a pop flash. Now, Sergei tries to play close to the smokes in order to play around this lurk smoke. But still good utility from north here. As now they isolated off banana, there's no flashes to get Ents on the other side of the smoke here. And the good scaling utility actually gets, catches Ariel completely blind on the site. Now Sergei and X7 are here, and they're pretty much stuck. And Sergei, he just doesn't have the lineup there uh, to try to get Valde off the bomb. He almost gets it, and you can see his spray control coming out huge there as he gets the headshot on Valde. And the last two, which really hurts the North economy a lot, but he isn't able to close it out, so... You can see in the previous round, though, that I'll use this as a little bit of a cursor. Um, Sergey and his teammate played around Banana together, but they left only two on the bomb site. Uh, a lot of times, it's a little more ideal to leave three on the bomb site. Uh, a lot of pro teams go for that, or one water, one uh, around Banana, and then two on the site. That's a more common setup, I'd say. But instead, uh, and decide to leave two towards Banana. You do see that come out in pro games, but that's the reason you don't see it as often as the three-man setup towards site, one in one including water. Usually it's new box emo water. Um, uh, is for that exact reason, the smoke. And a really good angle from AZ. I don't really see that too, all too often. It's really risky, but it was uh, good enough to get the kill onto Sergei. So. Finally, Ents are going to slow down a little bit. Um, they, uh, or at least in their buy, they aren't going to go for the full force here, and they're just going to buy a half, go for a half buy here. Nades come out. Sergei's down to low HP already. And it's really just another banana rush. It seems like Ents really like to do this. Uh, when there's just one more round on the line here, it's actually a pretty strong play to uh, just go for that. Sergey throws a front sight smoke. Uh, this was going to be kind of a weird sight wrap strategy. As we can see, uh, he smokes off the front of the site and they smoked off CT, so really they all have to push through water. Maybe a flash would have enabled people to jump through that smoke, but Sergey's taken out. Good counter utility from north. And now Surya and his team finally have a good buy here. As do North, though. They have the double off running. And now Ents, they get a little bit, just a little bit more aggressive here. Positioning Sergey in this cubby here, as opposed to all the way at the bottom of Banana, and pushing up with that flashbang, uh, just showing a little bit more command of the Banana uh, position, and it pays off for them. Uh, they are able to now finally get this banana control that they've so desired. Um, one of the reasons Sergey probably didn't go for that earlier is because uh, he was in support of my teammates, but he does get taken out. Uh, we'll watch the hold from north as the round is over here, but you can see that Ents, they really wanted a hammer B, and uh, finally they go for it on a gun round. Kirby makes a pretty nice play through the smoke there to try to keep his team in this, but Alexi is able to take him out. And that's going to be it for North's chances here. Alexi finally fakes the, fakes the tap here, but we'll just watch it all play out. I mean, see how Katie tries to go for this in a 1v3. Actually, he's able to get the kill on Alexi. Does a good job of isolating the angles here and uh, brings it down to a 1v1, in fact. And almost catches Alu there, but Alu's just a little too quick on the trigger. And that's going to be it for this game here. And really, uh, pretty solid performance, though, to try to come back from north on the CT side. It's just a shame that uh, they really had no T side to speak of in the previous half. So that's really Sergey for you. Summary things, I would say, are, uh, I'd say, really solid aimer. Um, two, he's he really likes to make a plays with his teammates. Um, we never really see Sergey going for too many individual plays. Uh, he usually tries to support his teammates at A or on T side. Uh, really well. You're not. I. I don't think there was a single time in this game where Sergey kind of saw one v one and uh, just took it. Other than of course when he's in a clutch situation, but that's obviously a different situ uh, scenario. But we can see that he's really good at playing off his teammates, and that's really nice to see. Um, despite him not having good utility damage uh, or grenade damage, um, as you can see on the uh, kind of uh, HLTV stat line there, 
Um, he's a really good team player. Uh, consistently made plays with Ariel or Alu towards bracket. It's pretty much Ariel towards apartments, Alu towards bracket, Ariel around site or pit. And then at B, he made plays there with his teammates on CT side. On uh, T side, he doesn't really overextend by himself. He has good aim, but he doesn't impose it on the uh, on the other team. He doesn't just kind of run up and just gun out. Uh, he waits for his team, but that's also due in part probably to Ents' structure. Ents have really good structure. They make a lot of good team positional plays where they try to take map control together as a group so that they can either push forward, get more information, or they can now stack another bomb site. They consistently make those kind of plays, and uh, it's really nice to see Ents have those kind of fundamentals. Uh, the other players on this players on this team are definitely strong. Alu and Ariel come to mind for sure uh, when I think of star power on this team but you don't see them having to make too many star power individual plays uh, a lot of it is based off of just the buddy system and do a really good job at that so well that's pretty much it um hopefully you guys enjoyed this and uh i'll be coming out with more shortly i might do an, a like a shortened edited one i kind of want to see the feedback you guys have so be sure to leave comments in the section below and of course um hit that like button and I mean, give me, give me a follow on Twitter or Twitch if you guys are interested, um, as well as I'm consistently using those also to put out more content and uh, just speak my thoughts. So uh, as always, being toxic is a choice.